dear God, so it's true. I killed my sister. I did everything to hide the truth. Then I killed my mother to rid myself of the guilt. But she was nasty and everything was her fault. God, what does that make me? I don't deserve to live a second longer. Maybe I will see her again and I can try and ask for her forgiveness. But if there is nothing after death, at least I will be free from this suffering. I know it's not right, but I can't do this anymore. I fired instinctively at that soldier, hitting him right in the head, but it was not a good idea. He obviously didn't come alone. When the others came in, I closed my eyes. I heard a lot of commotion and then felt a sharp pain in the stomach. They were kicking me while another tried in vain to convince himself. But the soldier on the ground was still alive. They hit me in the ribs, the back and the stomach. I couldn't breathe and at the same time I felt the need to vomit. They were ordered to put me on a seat. They bound me up so tightly that I couldn't feel my hands or feet. On the seat next to me was my father. He was breathing, but he appeared to be unconscious. The guy in charge started asking me questions. He kept hitting me in the face and head with some kind of short cane. It was so violent I thought my skull would crack open. All I could taste in my mouth was blood and broken teeth. I ran my tongue across my teeth, thinking to myself that I'd never be able to smile again. A frivolous thought perhaps, but a painful one nonetheless. Part of my top lip was cut open and was hanging down. I foolishly tried to put it back in place using my tongue and lower lip. I threw up. They forced me to confess that my father had been carrying out all kinds of activity within the German army. Of course, I didn't know anything about it, so I tried to explain. But those punches... I would have done whatever it took to stop them. Whatever it took. Just after I told them what they wanted to hear, the general said, All it took were two slaps and you sold out your father, you German whore. Then he ordered my father to be executed. It took less than a moment. He didn't even move. He pointed to one of the soldiers and then he pointed to me. My time had come. They all left except for the soldier who had the unpleasant task of finishing me off. I wanted to die, but not like that. Terror engulfed me. I could almost hear the sound of my body evacuating. I had the gun pointed to my forehead. I couldn't look at his face. I stank. I felt indecent. Then he moved the gun on purpose and shot without hitting me. He had taken pity on me. It must have been my fate not to die. He quickly cut the ropes and pushed me to the ground, saying out loud, It's done. The German whore has been dealt with. I was left motionless on the ground. He left, and I fainted again. When I came around, I did not know what to do. I was completely empty and felt pain everywhere. Everyone was dead. I was now alone in the world. I felt a desire to hear their voices one last time on Daddy's recorder in the dark room. Provided the soldiers hadn't destroyed it, that is.
Now I will wake her up and she will confess. You can bet on it. What are you doing with your father's gun? It's dangerous. Stop it. Talk. Tell me everything now. Tell me what you have done. Okay, okay. Calm down. I will tell you everything. I found that strange note when I woke up. And I immediately realized that something was wrong. Something was up with you, aside from your usual quirks. I came to check, but you weren't in your bedroom. You had spoken about the lake, and I got worried, so I called your father, and we went to see what was going on. We found you sitting in your underwear at the side of the lake. You kept saying that nothing had happened, and you kept repeating things like that. I hugged you to try and make you feel better, but you did not speak again for days. What is happening to you? You should tell me what's going on. I'm not going to that loony bin. I would never have wanted this, but I'm afraid you will harm yourself further. You were really hurting yourself in front of the piano that night. What else could we do? You killed my sister and now you're afraid because I found out. So you're making up stories, aren't you? But I'm not falling for it this time. What are you saying? Your sister. Please, no. I was not well. I didn't know what I was saying. So many years have passed. You were little then. I thought everyone had forgotten that nonsense. Shut up. Don't speak. Don't say anything else. What are you doing, my daughter? Why do you want to ruin your life? I'm sorry. It wasn't me who just shot Mummy. It wasn't me. I didn't know who I was anymore. Everything had fallen apart. I was afraid of myself. My God, it was terrible. I had always been convinced that I was too good for myself, but then... I had become my own enemy. I was the danger. What should I have done? I thought about the puppet theatre in my old room. There I could find something in myself, perhaps. So I rushed to go play with it again. Mummy nearly died giving birth to me. This is what remains in my memory of my mother's, nanny's and father's stories. I remember little to nothing of my childhood at home. I have to try though. Maybe the important events I should know are right there. How are you, madam? I can't move. I'm too sick. I feel a sharp pain. Do you need anything? I can feel it. The time has come. Everything is ready. Help! 
Something is wrong. It is help. Irene is not well. How are you, honey? I'm getting weaker and weaker. Doctor, hurry! Arena is sick! Don't worry, Irene. The pain you feel is natural. Push, Irene, push. It was an accident, Mummy. Please don't hit him.
stupid, Martha. Why are you talking like this, Julia? Martha spilled water on my head. Stop complaining or you will get punished. Mummy, I won't do it anymore. I promise. Too late. These false tears won't help you. Stay still. Now I'll make you want to bark. Leave my dog alone! There's no point screaming, stupid girl. Now I'll show you how insane I am. Help, Daddy, help! Screaming won't work. Your father is not here like usual. Eat it. No! I said eat. Oh. 
I was beginning to remember, but I was so scared to remember too much, especially all at once. I didn't have time to guess exactly what happened. It was making me too upset. Pulling out those memories was like trying to pull out a tooth on your own. Almost impossible, and far too painful. The white lady told me that the church is a safe place and home to its children. Donatilio, my priest, I have to talk to him. I have to call him on the telephone. Father, help me. They're all dead. Daddy, Mummy, everyone. Okay, Father, but first I want to play with my puppets for a while. Now I know what Thanks to the heroic assistance of Martha K, daughter of General Erik K, a mission devised by the partisans to steal weapons from the German army has been put to a stop. The same animals were involved in the killing of the general's other daughter, Julia K, and in an attempt to murder young Martha herself. Vile traitors were executed on the spot. Justice has been served for Italy, for Duce the Second. Those boys, they had all been killed and it was my fault. They were my age, and a few of them were our friends. I didn't think it would go like that. But wasn't it obvious, really? What was I actually expecting? I felt like a coward. But what could I have done? Should I have betrayed my father? I loved my father, but I also loved my friend Lapo. 
Which side was I on? I just listened to my heart. I thought it was the right thing to do. But instead, it was the worst thing I could have done. Twenty first of July. Lapo is dead. They shot me in the back when I discovered his body. I thought I had hit rock bottom. These are soulless, empty days. After so many awful events, I finally managed to meet the White Lady. Or so I believe. The line between reality and dreams is becoming less and less clear to me. I thought a lot about her words, but they didn't shed any light on my assumptions. They kept ringing in my mind. Maybe I will understand when the time comes. Now I know for certain that it was Mummy who killed Martha, when she thought that she was me. Only a week ago, all of this would have seemed impossible. I just need to find the proof, so she can pay for what she has done. I didn't go anywhere near the soldiers. Germans or allies. They had all caused me harm. I didn't want to approach anyone. For any reason. Once I crossed that threshold, I completely lost touch with reality. Everyone around me had died while I survived everything. I don't remember how things went. I just remember a big light and then photographs were being taken of me. There was a man dressed in white, a doctor I presume. He was asking me questions, but I didn't understand what he was actually asking me. He wrote something on a piece of paper and then two nurses led me away. I was in the mental asylum. Some women were talking to themselves, others cried. Some were even covered in their own filth. Others were violent and tried to hurt themselves any way possible. They started to give me injections. What they gave me made my whole body shake. I broke my vertebrae and an ankle. I think it was called cardiazole or something like that. My body was like a fire that didn't want to be put out. When it appeared to be quenched, it would come back, even stronger than before. In the end, though, they won. There was no longer any need for therapy. Something inside of me had died. But nevertheless, I insisted on carrying along this painful journey. I was stronger than I could ever have imagined.
Who are you? Wait, wait. I want answers. Don't go away. Talk to me about Martha, please. Martha, Julia, there's no longer any difference. I am both Martha and Julia, whichever you want. It's us, so it's true. And Mother, is she alive? I really don't know. Her death could be all my invention. Or maybe things went just as I remember. I'm consumed by doubt. What about Father? The soldiers, did that really happen? It happened. He was shot right in front of me. Fear, pain, shame. I can't remove it. I cannot relive it either. Unfortunately, I knew that already. What about Nanny? I haven't seen Nanny in so long. I don't know what could have happened to her. Who knows where she is, the poor thing. I'm afraid to ask about Lapo. Mine's in our woods. No way. Dad never would have allowed me to go there if there was. It must all be my imagination. Maybe even another nightmare. I was convinced that he was dead. One last question. The pregnancy? Martha was pregnant. Her deformed baby died with her. Maybe she was in pain. That's enough now. All of these questions are pointless, aren't they? It's all inside of us. We just need to turn the mirror. Is it not all just the reflection of an unknowable existence? Nothing more than a puppet show. Ready for everything with open arms. Even ready to kill. Legs always ready to run. The womb that conceived in sin. Lastly, the mind. To protect us, it has turned us into monsters. Either way, we cannot live like this, can we? I'll take care of it. I don't need to worry. I'll try to sleep if I can. I've got this.
the 26th of July, San Casciano was bombed and the church was destroyed. But I was not there then. I was already in the asylum. Once again, stubbornly, I was not dead. The bombs hadn't killed me, and I had also survived myself. The most absurd test and the hardest one. The war ended some time ago now, both out there and inside of me. I was on the wrong side of the gate, but now I can turn that page. Life is opening its doors again, isn't it? If I hadn't been so lucky to survive myself, I would have thrown everything away. We think that danger is all around us, ready to attack. But the more devious and misleading dangers are the ones that are inside of us. They grow without us realizing. They make us suffer, remain confused and remove our self-respect. I would have wanted to ask for help, but I was alone. This is my story. Thank you for being here, for listening to me. Now I am ready to leave. How long will it take to get home? <laughs>